Good morning. Thanks for your time. We uh, look forward to seeing you at the 2022 Cincinnati Music Festival coming this Saturday. Uh, we've got several members of the media uh, with us, and we thank you for doing this Zoom interview in advance of the Cincinnati Music Festival. A, a couple questions for you, if I may, and feel free to, to jump in whoever would like to address them. The Cincinnati Music Festival is back after two years uh, due to the pandemic. How does it feel to be back performing in person? Um, I think everybody feels uh, they've got their own uh, way of expressing it, but it's, it's, it's a great feeling to uh, get back in front of live audiences again and uh, to be able to share your music once more. I think uh, everybody have, uh, has, has developed a, a healthy appetite for seeing live music again, as opposed to doing virtual performances. So it's nice to be in the same room uh, with people, seeing their expressions, just feeling the energy that they give you from having been away so long and just knowing that they're tuning into music that, that they love and appreciate. I don't know, Keith, Danny, if you wanna share. Uh, again, echoing some of the sentiments that Kevin gave, um, we have been performing since uh, probably like uh, around April, uh through through the through the spring and through the summer and it is a a welcome uh format for us because that's the part of the music business that i think that we have come to love the most is being able to share what we've done in a studio over the years and bring that live in front of audiences and make that connection with our music to the people that have fell in love with the uh the stories that we seem to tell yeah and fortunately for r b acts like us you know, um, being in the studio and live, you know, just happens to go hand in hand. So, you know, we, we, we got to hit the stage and we, we were ready for it. <laughs> Great. What can concert goers expect from your show this weekend? Well, uh, concert goers could expect for After 7 to do what uh, I think uh, most of our fans have come to know that uh, we put on a great show. We try to captivate you visually as well as audio with our with our presentation and make that uh, connection that help people uh, feel our emotional side of how we feel about the, the things that we're singing and performing about. We're telling a story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When is the last time you performed in Cincinnati and any memories from the show? <laughs> I think it was a maybe uh it might have been a year before the pandemic happened. Is that right? You think? Is that it was, you think so it was, Yeah, it was about that time. It was the 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 year that the uh, more recent year that the boys to men were there, Tamar um uh was there. Um I can't remember the the entire card, but it was a great uh roster of artists uh more recently, probably you're probably about right, right? The year before, I think. Yeah, but, it, you know, it was exciting to, uh, for, because uh, it was many, many, we can call it years of moons, whichever one you want to call it, years ago that we performed uh, at the Cincinnati, at the time it was referred to as the Cincinnati Jazz Festival, now the Music Festival. So to come back after that many, so many years and to be able to perform uh, and to be in the uh, Paul Brown Stadium to look around to see you. Your, your likeness up on the big screen. It was, it was a, some, it was a moment. It was a moment for us. And we, we really enjoyed it. Yeah. So we have to ask about the, the story. Um, the first time you met L.A. Reed, a Cincinnati native. Uh, <laughs> any fun stories there that you can share with our Cincinnati media? Um, <laughs> well, let's, uh, let, what I do know is that before L.A. Reid became L.A. Reid, the producer, he was L.A. Reid in a band and he was a drummer. So uh, us being in Indianapolis, they would that would be one of the little cities that they would come to to perform in some of the clubs. So we met L.A. years, years before uh, they became this songwriting, producing duo. Uh, he and my brother, Kenny, Babyface. But um. You know, Keith, I don't know if you want to share the story we told in the beginning of our, uh, our illustrious career. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I think uh, it was it was important uh, in their presentation of uh, birthing after seven into the the world space of music that uh, everybody knew 
very well that uh, Face had these two phenomenal brothers who could sing, and uh, I was that third member that was close friends with uh, Melvin, uh, Babyface, and Kevon. Uh, we spent a lot of time in the summer singing and, uh, you know, performing songs as Kenny and uh, uh, Daryl Simmons were writing songs. But I think as they came closer to the opportunity for for us as a group to be put forward, it, it was a good uh, political move to, to, to kind of put out there that I was L.A.'s cousin, <laughs> which wasn't totally the truth, uh, but it, it, it read well on paper. And uh, eventually, you know, it came out that, you know, we were just all extremely close friends and it was, we, we, we lived like cousins, I say that. And, uh, but on paper, it wasn't totally true, but uh, the love and the affection for each other and for the music definitely played well for uh, the magazines and newspapers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'll go to the media questions now, gentlemen. Uh, what musical acts inspired the After Seven sound? Wow. Uh, this, I'm Kavan. I, I'd have to tell you that I loved the stand-up male vocal groups, of course. Uh, I love the, the stylistics. Of, I love the spinners. Oh, I love the spinners. The whispers were also an influence. I mean, Keith and I used to, and Melvin and I used to do covers of the whispers. Uh, before we actually got into the industry when we would sing it. You may not know what these are. These are called gong shows. I don't know if you recall what those are. But anyway, we used to perform gong shows and take the money at the end of the night. But we would perform a lot of the songs from groups that inspired us, that influenced us. But it wasn't just the stand-up male vocal groups. There it was the Donny Hathaways, the Phoebe Wonders, the Gladys Knight, Marvin Gaye. Everybody that was part of that musical push uh, in the early days was the music that we fell in love with that made us want to do what it is that we do today. So um, we know that we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. And had it not been for them, we may not have been inspired to do what it is that we're doing today. Name one thing that has remained the same throughout this entire time for After Seven. Hmm. <laughs> Got any thoughts on that, Mr. Mitchell? Uh, I think just the consistency of, of a passionate approach to how our music, how we record our music, which, you know, was, was led by uh, Babyface and Daryl Simmons, as well as L.A. in the studio. And they were they, they just gave us the pathway to develop what After Seven became vocally. And um, we just followed their vision and you know, the success that they had gave you the confidence that they're taking you in the right direction. And we just moved forward and owned it and carried it forward as we got with different producers and different songwriters. That same uh, sense of, of perfection uh, and believability, uh, the emotional side of interpreting what the writer was trying to deliver, we tried to carry that forward. And I think the success of that is what has kind of been able to sustain us over these years. Is there a favorite song that After Seven has recorded and can each member give us their answer? <laughs> well, it's easy. That's, that's the easy one. Ready or Not, that's our flagship song. Um, it was, um, there are memories attached to that song. It was one of the first songs that Babyface had penned that had us come we were out in LA, we were fresh from Keith in Chicago, Melvin in Indianapolis, I'm in Indianapolis, and we all you know, picked up and went to LA. And um, we were there for about a month and a half before we actually got started. And uh, my brother Kenny had us come over to his house in, uh, up in Hollywood Hills, I think it was, and called us in there, it was a, I think it was a Sunday morning, sunny, nice, beautiful sunny day, and he gave us the melody and the lyrics of Ready or Not. And um, it is really probably the one song for me, I think that defines who we are, the sound of After Seven, the, the trade off between Melvin and myself, the lush harmonies, uh, a story that goes along with it hand in hand that um, I can't think there's anything else that uh, 
it really says after seven better than radio nine. Uh, I kind of have to agree, but uh, we, we do have some other songs that established uh, the uh, sound of after seven, baby, I'm for real. Um, which again, uh, that song, Daryl Simmons, uh, came up with the concept of us re doing that cover song, which in enabled each one of us to, to participate in the vocal performance of that song and the dynamics of the trade-off between Melvin and uh, Kevon, again, echoed what, uh, ready or not, that imprint was carried forward. And, you know, it was, it, ready or not was like the blueprint. And then it was just carried forward and became a signature of what, what After Seven did. But uh, yeah, I think Baby I'm For Real kind of helped to support what we did with Ready or Not. What do you think, Danny? Mm -hmm. well, oh, looks like we lost Danny, so. Oh, here, again, Danny. here he comes got, back in. I think he got scared of the question, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let him come back in. Yeah. Uh, you're back, Danny? Oh yeah! <laughs> Don't be afraid of that question. What's what? What do you got? What do you got for us? <laughs> uh, well, the answer for me is it, it just has to be um, it has to be ready or not. Uh, it's it's made such a impact on all our lives, uh, including the fans of After Seven, and um, you can't run away from it. Every every show, you're gonna get an angry fan or two if you don't sing that song. So, you know that just that's just uh. Like you said, it was a flagship song. Yeah. Andy, we'll stay with you. What does Sky High mean? Ah, well, <laughs> to clarify, um, a friend of mine, an old friend of mine gave me the name. Uh, we used to do shows together in Boston all the time. And um, that's where I grew up. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, one day he was like, you know what? That's what I'm going to call you. Man. I'm going to call you Sky High. I was like, well, what's that have to do with me? He was like, well, it's because on the street, on every day, you're just a regular person. But once you get on stage, you turn into a, a whole different person. You go into the stratosphere. So I'm going to call you Sky High. So I was like, okay. <laughs> it just kind of stayed with me. You know, I mean, I forced it at first. And I was just like, I'll just keep it. You know, because after a while, Daniel McClain just kind of sounded like I was a, like I was a, you know, Irish. <laughs> But yeah, that's 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 the story. That's the story. <laughs> Another question: Which other group would you have liked to work with back in the day? Wow. Um, you know that is. You know, it, I always thought it would have been an interesting pairing if After Seven and In Vogue had worked together. Um, but you know, you very seldom, if ever, see groups work together. If I and I could be wrong, but I can't recall off the top of my head where you see groups collectively working together. But uh, I always thought, you know, um, four lovely women and three okay guys could work. <laughs> Honestly, I quite frankly, I think the one thing that we did get to be a part of was the Black Men United um, project. Um, and that gave us an opportunity to sing with a lot of other groups as well as individual artists. And that, that became a, a rather successful uh, gold album that we got to be a part of. And gentlemen, last question. What has given you the ability to have the longevity as a group? Could you ask that question again? I'm sorry. What has given you the ability to have longevity as a group? Um, I think it is a, a real love, just a true love and passion for what we do. Um, and just knowing that, uh, um, there are a lot of things that we could have been doing, uh, but we had the opportunity to do something that we love to do. And it took quite some time before Keith and I had this opportunity, this opportunity was presented. We were, we weren't spraying chickens at the time. <laughs> that this happened. So, um, so it was a, a long time coming. It was a long time time coming, and it wasn't even certain that that could happen. But when it did come, we knew that this was what we wanted to do. And so, um, when you you 
wait on and pray for and long to do something and the opportunity finally comes, you know, you learn to uh, manage it, to take care of it, you know, and appreciate it. And I think that's what we've done over the years. You know, there was a hiatus that we had, of course, but that love for what we do is still very, very present, very prevalent in how we approach our music and how we entertain today. So I think, you know, just a strong love for music and having the opportunity to do it is, I think, what keeps us here today. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. We look forward to seeing you on the Cincinnati Music Festival stage on Saturday. And uh, media, I will send this link out uh, to your email um, later this morning. So again, safe travels to Cincinnati. Thank you so much. Thank you. Look forward thank to you. It. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.